Hey everyone, Sean here, and I had a crazy idea. And so I pushed Eli to say, what if over the next five days, coming up to the end of the year, we opened up the vaults of the Fargorian Fridays and we handpicked a few of our favorite things that we've been releasing for patrons and supporters on Patreon and released it to all of you, just so you could get a taste of what we're doing behind the scenes. And so that's what we're doing. Over the next five days, we're going to handpick across the Alba feed and the end of time feed a few of our favorite things we've been producing for supporters. And you can become a supporter and get access to these things and more by visiting patreon.com slash albasalix or visiting our website at otherbothers.com. And if you become a patron at the $5 up level by January 1st, 2019, we are going to send you the most awesome sticker we've ever had created yet. And you can do all of that at patreon.com slash albasalix or by visiting otherbothers.com. What you're about to hear is one of the behind the scenes making of episodes we've been doing where Eli takes apart how he creates some of the most interesting sounds that you've been hearing in the end of time and other bothers. And it's one of our most loved things we release on Fargorian Fridays. And coming up, we're going to release a deleted scene. We're going to release a whole mini standalone episode. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Hey gang, it's Eli here with another Farlorian Friday bonus for you, all our lovely supporters. This time I'm going to break down the sound effect we use for Blatt's, um, uh, let's say, infamous weapon in The End of Time and Other Bothers. So spoilers for episode four, and uh, later on in this I'm going to talk about a variation that appears in episode 11, so heads up. So we came up with the idea for what would eventually become the end of time and other bothers around Christmas time. And so as a kind of a little present to myself, I grabbed this sound library that was on sale with lots of sword and armor sounds. And I was thinking we might need them for the show and maybe future episodes of Alba Salix too. I was thinking especially of Blatt because um, like from the get go, we'd known that Blatt was going to be a half demon with a signature weapon. Uh, it's part of the custom playbook that Sean brewed up for him. It's based on, uh, it's called the Nephilim uh, playbook by Daniel Stoffel. The move itself in Dungeon World terms is called Soul Bounded Weapon, the original. It has, it's a sort of that image of like an angel or a demon, like pulling a flaming sword from their own chest and smiting their enemies. And so, the, you know, the stage is set. It's episode four. The, ty- the characters are finally going to level up to first level and, you know, gain some of these powers that have been written on their sheets since day one. And Sean, to do that, tosses Blatt into this impossible situation. He's sucked into a storybook. He's in hell. He's forced to fight for his life. And the, the idea is that his natural demonic abilities are about to be revealed. And, of course, this happens. So uh, Blatt closes his eyes. And thinks really, really hard. Weapon, 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 and just yells at the top of his lungs, Bazooka! And we're all like, well, there's my plan at the window. But at the same time, it's like, this is this is actually going to be fun. The trouble is, I've been trying to keep the budget down for the show, for one thing. This is coming out every two weeks. I can't be buying sound effects libraries constantly. You're like doing tons of Foley work all the time because uh, that's time consuming. Instead, I'm dig- making do with what I got in my current library plus like public domain sounds sourced from places like freesound.org. And that's where all the elements of this new effect came from. First of all, there's this. This is the sound of a metal pipe being dragged across a concrete floor in a nice big echoey building. So I slowed it down to about three quarters speed and then flipped it around backwards. That gives you that, that nice swell. It's like the, the mystical energy to create the bazooka is being pulled out of Blatt's body or soul or something. Next, we got a couple layers of metal pieces and that's from this effect. Uh, again, I've slowed this down to 50 and 60% of its original speed, and it gives it some, some body. 
Because when you slow down a sound, effectively you're making it sound like the same object, only bigger. And total tangent here. That's why pitch shifting a voice makes it sound unnatural. Not only are you bringing the pitch down um, without some fancy digital filtering, there's, there's something called formant shifting that you get on more expensive pitch shifter plugins. Without that, you're you're making it sound like the speaker's mouth and throat are like bigger or smaller than human sized when you change the speed. But that is basically what I did to Sean's voice when he's playing Reginald the Demon. He's just shifted down a little under two semitones. Uh, do you like sugar, milk? Are you one of those lemon people? Uh, do you like sugar, milk? Are you one of those lemon people? Now the trick with that is that Reginald can't ever talk at the same time as anyone else, just in case uh, their voices get picked up by Sean's microphone and get pitch shifted as well. And vice versa, if Sean's voice is showing up on someone else's audio, we're going to hear his voice at two different pitches. Uh, do you like sugar, milk? Are you one of those lemon people? And that's not quite the effect I was after. Anyway, back to the bazooka. Here's our, our clanking metal sound. And then I combine that with the same sound reversed uh, to kind of suggest all the pieces of the bazooka flying into place. And there's also this chain pulley sound. And that gives the effect of the pieces kind of shuffling around against each other. Finally, there's the eyepiece that Sean mentions. And that's the sound of a set of vice grips. Vice grips make awesome noises. They're like, I think they were the basis of the original lock sound on the iPhone. Because um, they make this really positive, satisfying kind of snap. And once again, slow down. Sounds bigger. All together, it sounds like this. So I mixed down a version of that, and every time it appears, I'll rearrange it a little bit. I'll cut a bit and shift it around just for variety, but the pieces are all there. For the rocket, I had a few good explosion sounds I could use for the impact, but I couldn't find anything really good for the rocket itself, either free or paid without buying a, a whole military artillery library. So I busted out a free software synthesizer plugin called Tyrell N6. So this is just its noise generator. And there's a bit of high pass filtering gives it the little at the beginning. And then that's put through a couple of different chorus and distortion effects and gives it some animation. And finally, it's a pitch shift effect that gives it that sort of the Doppler effect of the rocket zooming off into the distance and the amount of the pitch shift is slowly changing. So yeah, the, the sword and armor library, I think I have used once in the whole first half a year of this show. And that was to create the sound of Reginald summoning his ax. So it does a uh, nice little blade shing noise. And then there's a, a whoosh that I added, that I got elsewhere, and it gives it some, some build. And there's a bit of delay on that as well. Okay, spoilers for episode 11. So in episode 11, of course, everything goes wrong. The energy of Blatt's weapon gets channeled into his connection to the ancient god Moragu and all that. It starts to act as a lightning rod over the course of about a minute of narration from Sean. So I went back to the file where I built the original bazooka assembly effect and used that as the basis. So here's our pipe dragging on concrete, but this time it's time stretched. So it's, it's slowed down in time, but not changed in pitch. And there's a flange effect added to give it some more life. I uh, did something similar with the metal pieces, slowing them way, way down, and then pitching some of them back up. And that leaves some grainy artifacts that kind of add to the effect. And there's some reverb on that too to just sort of smooth it out a bit. On top of those is there's a copy of the original bazooka effect, time stretched. And that and the metal pieces are put through this ring modulator effect, and that adds some more kind of unnatural sounding harmonics to the sound.
And I've used automation in Reaper to slowly change the ring modulator frequency. And that gives it this slow rise that builds and builds as the energy gets more unstable. Just psychologically, rising sounds kind of get our attention. They, they make us a little more tense because something might be coming towards us. And on top of that, here's our regular metal chunks, although I've added some more of them because, you know, something's preventing the bazooka from forming completely. So it's like the bazooka is half-assembling and then the pieces are starting to fall apart again. So there you go. Well, that's how you make a soul-bound bazooka. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll talk to you all again soon.